This week on TGC News, a new Blackwater shotgun, an actually innovative muzzleloader product from Federal, and yes, we are covering the Remington breakup. kel continues to evolve and innovate with designs like the P-17, an ultra-affordable 17-round 22 pistol, or the CP-33, a 33-round 22 caliber pistol. How about the KS-7 bullpup shotgun? And of course, the RDB lineup continues to grow with the RDB Defender. kel keeps pushing the boundaries of what is possible. To learn more, go to kel Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton, and I am sick. So, we're not at the studio, we're here at the apartment. Forgive the audio, forgive the less than stellar quality, you guys know the drill. It's not a tumor! We have a ton of stuff to cover this week, so if you would please, fire it up Izzy, it's rapid fire time. First up this week, a new shotgun from a company that you may recognize. Blackwater Worldwide made their name a long time ago doing things overseas, and now they're in the firearms game. Not super long ago, they acquired the Iron Horse Thumb Trigger AR, and now they've released a 12-gauge called the Sentry. It's a mag-fed pump action with some interesting features. From back to front, it's got a shortened length of pull, non-adjustable stock, monolithic aluminum upper receiver, AR-style lower that has compatibility with AR triggers, Five round mags, 18 and a half inch barrel, long pick rail on the top, and one of the easiest takedowns that I've ever seen on any pump action. There's some good and weird stuff going on here, so I'm gonna unpack it. To me, a shortened length of pull is weird. No one that I've ever seen has trouble reaching the trigger group to necessitate short shortening that. It's more about the long reach to the pump, but Maybe I'm missing something here. They say that it helps make the gun more maneuverable, but again, the front end, to me, would do more than the back end would, right? Like shorten the front. The takedown being super easy is rad, and the fact that it takes an AR trigger is also really nice. The price, well, the MSRP lands at 899 bucks. Comparing this to something like the Mossberg 590M MagFed shotgun, the Sentry weighs a whole pound less, and it has five less rounds in the mag. The 590M is also almost 320 bucks cheaper. I'll let you guys tell me your thoughts on that down in the comments. Moving right along, a company called Red Arrow Weapons has a new 308. It's called the 308 Win Rifle. <laughs> Creative name. Long story short, it's got an 18 inch stainless fluted barrel, 15 inch M-lock handguard, CMC two and a half pound trigger, bronze finish is standard, Magpul K grip, Magpul ACSL stock, and a dual chamber brake on the end. I fully expected this thing to be really pricey, but I was surprised to see that the MSRP is $1,250. It seems like a reasonable price for everything that you're getting here. You guys will have to tell me down in the comments if you think it's worth that much or if the thing will be any good. Federal has come up with something really interesting for folks that hunt with muzzle loaders. It's called the Fire Stick, and it seems to solve a bunch of potential issues that come about with inline muzzle loaders. Essentially, it's a fully encapsulated powder charge that you would insert into a gun and then insert a 209 primer into that and not have to worry about anything else. No measuring powder, no breech plugs, nothing like that. They say it's impervious to the elements, allows for improved accuracy due to better tolerances and consistency, and they say it's cleaner because they use the Hodgdon triple shot powder, but that stuff has been around for years. That's not new, that powder. The other neat thing is that it makes unloading the gun a lot easier. This is definitely an important aspect here. However, this is not something that will work without a muzzle loader specifically designed for it. They worked with Traditions to develop a specific gun for this setup called the Nitro Fire. Not only do you need a specific gun, but it's also not 100% legal yet in every muzzle-loading hunting area. It's a new concept, so states are still reviewing this. A box of 10 fire sticks goes for about 27 bucks, and the gun is about 550 on the cheap end of the models. Certainly not horrible. I personally really hope this concept sticks because it's super cool. I really like the idea of innovations in black powder. I want to know what you guys think of seeing this, though. 
Is this something you actually care about? Or are you a black powder muzzle loader hunter? Sound off in the comments and let's talk about it. Woo! You guys still with me? All right, great. How about a little industry news? I know you want to hear about Remington and we're going to hit that. But first, something not quite as exciting. We always talk about military contracts for gun stuff and Knight's Armament grabbed another one, this time for suppressors specifically 5.56 suppressors. The contract is valued at 25.6 million and is slated to run through 2027. Now, the big one, Remington is a house divided, literally. I can't tell you how many times they were piloting the struggle bus or how long we've talked about their demise, but it seems as though it's all come to a head. The bids are in and the buyers have lined up and it's way better than PSA buying the ammo portion of the business like we covered a couple weeks ago. That was going to happen, but it's changed. The, the game has changed a little bit and it's way better. Okay, so here's the breakdown. Vista Outdoor, the parent company of Federal Ammo, bought the Remington Ammo business. A company called Round Hill Group out of Pennsylvania bought the firearms portion of Remington itself. Sierra Bullets bought Barnes Bullets. Ruger bought Marlin. JJE Holdings, aka Palmetto State Armory's parent company, bought DPMS, H&R, Storm Lake, AAC, and Parker. Franklin Armory bought Bushmaster, and Sportsman's Warehouse bought Tapco. That is a load to unpack. <laughs> Here we go. Federal buying the ammo portion makes a ton of sense, and I'll be really curious to see what they do with it. Round Hill Group doesn't seem to have a website. I don't know who the heck they are. So Lord knows if they will do anything worthwhile with that gun portion of Remington. Hopefully they do the name proud. Sierra buying Barnes is interesting and should lead to some cool innovations in the machine bullet space. Although Lehigh has sort of been ahead of Barnes for a long time. So they got some catch up to do. Ruger buying Marlin is freaking huge. Imagine seeing... Marlin quality control come back to a good place. Imagine seeing new and innovative lever guns. Imagine Marlins being affordable, more affordable as well. Ruger buying Marlin is a big deal. It's one of the biggest deals here. PSA buying AAC is really cool as well. Maybe we'll see cheap cans come out of that. We could also see some hopefully cool single shots out of the H&R brand. And if you ask me, DPMS should be put out to pasture. Franklin Armory buying Bushmaster makes sense for them, I guess. I'm not sure how it's going to work out with Bushmaster being like the center point of lawsuits over the years, but we shall see. And Sportsman's Warehouse grabbing Tapco is sort of meh. Tapco, to me, is a remnant of a bygone era and holds little value to the consumer without a complete revamp of that brand. I'm super curious to see what you guys are thinking on all this. I know social media is going crazy about it. I know there's something that I overlooked. I just know in this analytical look at it, we missed something, I'm sure. So let me know what you think is going to come out of it all down in the comments. Kinetic Development Group has been leading the charge on innovation for a long time, and they are a one-stop shop for everything related to the FN SCAR. Whether you need a scarging handle, an MREX rail, or maybe a sweet quick detach optic mount. KDG has all of that and more. And if you use the code TGC10 over at kineticdg.com, you'll get 10% off your entire order. And now it's time for more Friendly Fire in the Summit where I answer your questions. First up, Robert Derefsky says, do you think the NFA will ever go away? Honestly, I doubt it. It's going to take a complete reversal of U.S. politics to get that done. It's, it's just not going to happen right now. Derek Ledford says, what is the best way to train for high stress situations? Force on force is an amazing thing. If you've never done that, hit up our friends at MTAC in Indiana and go take a class. Genevieve is actually a instructor certified for that. It's awesome. Jason Osborne says, do gun rights play a role in where you decided to live? Currently, no. I was fortunate to be born and raised here in southeastern Pennsylvania, and over the years, the gun laws have been decent. However, Genevieve and I are considering moving elsewhere sometime in the next few years, and that's definitely going to play a little bit of a part. John Begley says, if Judge Barrett is accepted to the Supreme Court, how long do you think it will take to start making positive changes concerning gun rights? Well, she's, she's not going to just magically change things. Let's get that straight first. That's not how that works. 
In order for her to make a big difference, the Supreme Court would have to stop being scared of hearing gun cases and actually then rule in our favor. We would be better off in this entire situation, starting with actual freedom-based lawmakers being voted in and starting the movement from that end. My friendly fire question to you guys. We just hit 250,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you for that. Yay! We, we need to know what to do to celebrate. Drop your thoughts on what we should do down in the comments, of course. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to subscribe, star support us directly on there. And that is it for this week's show, guys. I would love it if you hit the like button to show your support. Of course, I did this sick, guys. Thumbs up for that at least. Come on. And if you think we've earned it, get subscribed as well. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.